Hello and welcome to One on One. I am Mary Anna Cohn. My guest today is a respected brand and reputation authority. He has been named one of the 100 most influential Africans by New African Magazine. He has been to over 50 countries across Africa and the world and has worked on over 100 brands, gaining an incomparable perspective and experience on building brands and reputation in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, Tebe Ikalafeng, it's good to have you join us. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you for having me in Lagos. Yeah. Yes, I know. It's so exciting. This is the second time I'm having to interview you and it's such an exciting experience. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, you have a very interesting dossier. At 50 plus countries, I need, literally need to take your life over. No. <laughs> well, I've been to every African country, so that's 55. And wow. I've been to over 110 countries in the world. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. So tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, we see you on social media, the very fun guy. You know, you're dancing or you're eating or you're talking to young people or brands. But tell us about you, a little bit about yourself and where you grew up. Well, I was born and raised in a small town called in Kimberley in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to study in Johannesburg and I moved to the U.S. to finish my studies there. Mm -hmm. Well, for Colgate in New York, came back to South Africa, Colgate, South Africa, Sun International. Then I was chief marketing officer for Nike for the continent for six years before starting off and starting my own brand consulting, brand leadership, mm -hmm. uh, which is a pan-African uh, advisory for building great brands in the continent. Wow, Nike, six years for the continent. How, how, how do you manage such a responsibility? Because it's, just, it's like carrying the whole, Af whole of Africa on, on your shoulders. shoulders. And you have to think like Nigeria, South Africa, Namibia, I mean, whatever country Very different is. countries, right? Yes. How, how different is that? Different sizes, different economies, yeah. different aspirations. And yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it's marketing is marketing, right? Uh, they say when it comes to marketing, you have only have to do three things right. You must know the people. You must speak to them in the right way, mm -hmm. and you must bring, you must connect to them in uh, through the channels uh, w which are closer to them. Mm -hmm. So speak to the people in a way they want to be spoken to. That's really basically marketing. So forget all the jargon they give you. Uh, marketing is really about telling great stories and ensuring that you are providing relevant products at the right time and the right price at the right place. So that's all I had to do for uh, for a living for for all those years in my mm -hmm. corporate career in in, in building brands. Uh, but of course, I was surrounded by a great team of of, of, of fellow marketers as product people and um, everybody else, yeah. Interesting. How are you able to balance that in your personal life? Because we know that if you're working in a, such a very demanding environment, you could put a strain in some other relationships. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> but, but, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but how, how were you able to you know, have that work-life balance? I think the key is to, to find and to be in a place where the work that you're doing is really meaningful. Uh, it's a channel for you to live your life, uh, to, to pursue your purpose. Because I say if you find a job that you love you never have to work a day in your life yeah. so I always struggle with people talk about balance because balance sounds like uh, I have to do s one something another time and another other time mm. and it seems to be a competitive uh, thing. I think it's about alignment. It's about uh, finding the type of work where you feel like as John Mishnah says uh, that sometimes some people look at you they think you're working, others think that you're playing but to you it should always be about living. Mm. Uh, so throughout my life I've been very lucky that I've, I've pursued and, uh, and I'm probably at a space now where the type of work I do and the type of play I do, I can't tell the difference whether I'm working or playing wow. uh, because to me, I'm always living. You, you, you sound like the kind of person that the Americans would say, he's a lucky guy, you know, you're, <laughs> you're living your best life. It takes a lot of years to get lucky, 25 years of experience are, are building brands. Hmm. Let's talk about building blocks. Um, when you started, you know, a lot of people realized very early on in life that this is their calling. Some other people, you know, they have to hit and miss before they get to it. How easy was it for you to realize that this was what you were meant to do? You know, I think perhaps there's two parts to it. Uh, on, on the one part is how you raised. So the way I was raised, I was always raised to do what I want as long as I do well where I need to be. Wow. So channeled growing up, my parents never ever said, oh, you ought to do this, you ought to do well at school, you ought to do, uh, you have to go to these places, you have to be seen with these people. They just allowed me to be whatever. One day I was in tennis, one day I was in football, one day I was in running, I was in soccer, I was in choral, I was in debate, wow. I was in chess. Um, every you did time, literally everything. Every time I do something, they go with the flow. 
Wow. So I don't go with their flow, they go with my flow because that's what parenting is supposed to be. It's supposed to be allowing children to play until they find themselves. So I was lucky that whenever, whatever choices I end up with uh, in academia as well uh, were the choices which were aligned with pretty much what I want. But having said so, I started off in, in accounting. So oh. <laughs> I, I, was started, for that. I started off in accounting and uh, it was horrible as you know, accounting. I don't know who does accounting, uh, but I think there's one or two people who like to count beans. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. so I did accounting and, uh, and I dropped out of, uh, after two years and I moved to the U.S. and I arrived in the U.S. and I was in a night class uh, dancing with friends, some friends from all over the continent. Because you know what's amazing about the 90s, uh, early, late 80s and 90s, when you move over to America before uh, the America we mm -hmm. know now, mm -hmm. you know, there was, it, was all, it was literally a melting pot of Africans and people from all over the world who've come to find, uh, to pursue their careers or to really find, but all of us had one thing in common. We all wanted to come back home. Mm -hmm. And I remember being in that nightclub, a friend of mine, some guy I'd met in South Africa many years ago. He said, what are you doing in America? He says, you, you know, you tell me you're always everywhere people are. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I'm here. I want to finish off my accounting degree. I want to become an accountant. And I go back, he says, accounting. He says, but bro, you're not an accountant. <laughs> He says, they don't look like you. He's like, what you should be doing is, he says, you're more like a marketer. So what you should be doing is, you should be pursuing, he says, forget South Africa. You're not in South Africa now. Nobody's going to judge you. Nobody's going to think you're doing a light career or a heavy career. He says, forget where you come from. Settle down here and do what, what matters. Do what you feel good at. And, you know, I listened to him, but I wasn't listening. It's in the middle of a nightclub. Although I don't drink, smoke, or do drugs, but still it was interesting uh, information that I just let go. Mm -hmm. But somehow, subconsciously, it was in there. Uh, I think when I finished my, my first degree, I finished my first degree, I was named American Marketing Student of, of the Year. Wow. Uh, I mean, I mean uh, Marketing Student of the Year by the American Marketing Association. So that was excellent. So, so it made me, oh, interesting. Maybe, maybe I'm going to become a marketer. <laughs> After all, I didn't know what they gave me that word for, by the way. I just thought, it's just a course. Yeah. I'm just a student. Uh, and then I did my, 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 my MBA and I got all that. And I, Went to work for Colgate in New York. Uh, one uh, thing I did, 80 applications, and I got only one response. You know how wow. they start? Mm -hmm. We regret to inform you. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and only one of them allowed me, and I was very lucky to get a mentor in New York, who then you know, was able to channel me, to work with me, to work with me, not to work through me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was quite interesting because uh, I then really settled into what I want to do. And by the time I came back to South Africa, it was the same thing. Uh, you know, I pretty much kept going and uh, uh, the places that I want, which with no pressure, felt no pressure from anybody. I uh, started, because remember I was in South Africa, I was two, two, two and a half years ahead. When I got to the US, I started from scratch. So everybody else that I found, everybody else in South Africa uh, that I left behind were two and a half years ahead of me. Oh. And I had to start from scratch. But of course, if you know where you're headed and you are doing what you are doing and you're staying in your own lane, you'll always be ahead of everybody mm. because you are on your own race. Wow. This is an interesting story. So let's talk about the challenges that you face now that you became, now that you knew what you were meant to do and you were pursuing it. What were the roadblocks that you faced? Because, you know, some people I've interviewed will say, oh, the biggest challenge in working is working with people. The people are very, very tough to work with. But what was your challenge? Well, I came back to South Africa um, just post-apartheid. Oh, Mandela was not president yet. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just been out of jail. Uh, so I came into a country which didn't know how to how to deal with quote unquote black people in their own continent and country. So, so the first, uh, first challenge was obviously now asserting yourself as, a, as, a, as an African in your own continent, in a country which was predominantly non-African, although the majority of the people were African, but the culture, uh, the corporates, the money, as is probably still the case largely, was not uh, geared towards Africa. So you'd say that would be the first one, uh, asserting who you are. But mm -hmm. I think the second one is uh, finding an organization organization where you can truly uh, uh, live your life yeah. and to not have a job. So, you know, I started, I was in Colgate, my interest in Colgate, you know, when I was in Colgate, South Africa, I felt like I was like, going to work every day. I felt like I was going to work because they started at a certain time and they ended at a certain time. Yeah. Uh, and everybody had a place. I fought all the time with them. I moved over to San Jose. It was the same story. I moved over to um, uh, to, to uh, Leo Burnett, uh, Pierre International. It was the same story. I arrived at Nike. I felt like I've just stopped working. 
Mm -hmm. I have just started living. Wow. So the second challenge would be really finding that place where you truly, where who you are, how you work, and the challenges that they face are aligned with the type of person that you are. I felt at, uh, in my career at Nike was a lot, a lot like that. All right. Well, we're still talking with Tewe Ikalafeng. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to dig into his brain a bit more. And as he tells us about branding in Africa, stay with us.